My dad had various nicknames for me. He'd call me Fireball sometimes because I'd start little businesses. He didn't care about money at all. He believed very much in having an inner scorecard and you know, never worry about what other people are thinking about you. You know, just, just uh, if you know why you're doing what you're doing, uh, that's good enough. When I want to do something, I always want to do it big. I've said many times that, that 65 or 70 and the people that you want to have love you actually do love you. You're a success. Some people should not own stocks at all because they just get too upset with price fluctuations. If you're going to do dumb things because your stock, a stock goes down, you shouldn't own a stock at all. <laughs> the first books I read on investment were actually in my dad's office. I just read and read and read. I probably read five to six hours a day. I mean, I figured out very early, you don't have to be that smart in this business, which is fortunate, but you do have to have the right temperament. The best gift I was ever given was to have the father that I had when I was born. Known as the Oracle of Omaha, the 91-year-old Warren Buffett is one of the most successful investors of all time. He went from buying his first stock at age 11 to running Berkshire Hathaway, a multinational holding company with total assets nearing $1 trillion. Often appearing on lists alongside Bill Gates and Elon Musk, his current net worth is $105 billion, placing him as the seventh richest person in the world. Despite such enormous wealth, he maintains a simple lifestyle. He lives in the same home that he bought back in 1958 for $31,500. He makes his daily commute in his 2014 Cadillac XTS, often stopping by McDonald's for breakfast before heading into the office. So for someone with such a simple routine and more money than he could possibly spend, what makes him happy? I would have to be honestly say that, that, that what makes me happiest is what I'm doing, what I'm doing. I know I'll win over time. That doesn't mean I'll beat everybody else or anything like that, but I'll, I, I mean, the game is very, very, very easy if you have the right lessons in your mind about what you're buying. I'm not buying stocks. I'm buying pieces of overwhelmingly American business. Uh, and I'm happy when that's happy, when that's uh, when I'm doing it. I'm happy when stocks are going down. I'm happier when stocks are going down because I, I, I can buy more of them with the same amount of money. I'd be happy if I was a farmer. I'd want farmland to go down. Uh, so I could buy more acreage, you know, if I was, I mean, it just makes sense. The best boat you can have is your own talent, you know, I mean, it's, they can't, they can't take it away from you, they, inflation can't take it from you, right. taxes can't take it from you, so I, I, when I talk to students, I see these students and I tell them, you know, you're a million dollar asset, I would pay you a hundred thousand dollars to the MBAs for 10% of the earnings for the rest of your life, so that makes you a million dollar asset. Now, if you can do something to increase that value 50%, if you can learn to communicate better verbally or in written form, and you become 50% more, that's five hundred thousand dollars just by improving yourself. I mean, it, not, nobody can take that away from you, and, and so I urge every, everybody, you know, when they're, I talk to them in high school about this, uh, and, 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 and colleges, just do develop develop the habits you've got the brain power you've got the energy but develop the habits of success and, and look around you at the people that you admire you know and list what makes you admire them compared to somebody else that looks equally strong or equally uh, talented and those are those are things that you can do I mean just write them down and and, and uh, you know people like people that are they're, they like them if they're if they're humorous and they're friendly if they're if they're uh, if they give credit to the other fellow, I mean, uh, and, and they don't like them if they're stingy, you know, or they overstate and overpromise and all those sort of things. Well, that's a decision, that's a decision you make. So, so I, I encourage everybody to build your own moat around yourself. Accumulating such a large net worth doesn't happen if you're average at what you do. Clearly, Warren Buffett is at the top of the investing game. Here's some of his best investing advice. All you have to do is just buy a cross section of America and then never listen to people like me or read the papers or do anything subsequently. Uh, it, uh, they, think, they think that because you can trade, you should trade. They, you buy a farm, you buy an apartment house, you can't resell it tomorrow and, and you know, the cost of moving around. Or you, now you get something handed to you, liquidity, you know, which is instant, you can sell and the, the cost of doing it are pennies you know, compared to other kinds of investment activity. So because they can so easily move around, they do move around. And, Moving around is not smarter than investing. By far the best investment you can make is in yourself. I mean, that, for example, communication skills. I tell the students that come that uh, they're going to graduate schools and 
business and they, they're learning all these complicated formulas and all that, if they just learn to communicate better, and both in writing and in person, they increase their value at least 50%. You know, I mean, it, it, uh, if you can't communicate, somebody says, you know, it's like winking at a girl in the dark. Nothing happens, you know, basically. And, and you have to be able to get, get forth your ideas. And, uh, and that's, that's relatively easy. I did it myself. It, it's just hugely important. And you, if you invest in yourself, nobody can take it away from you. Well, I've advised is, uh, you know, the most important thing uh, is really who you associate with. You want to associate with people that are better than you are. I mean, basically, you'll go in the direction of the people that you associate with. And, and you want to have the right heroes. Uh, you want people, if you want to emulate somebody, you better pick very carefully who you want to emulate. And uh, obviously, you can't pick your parents. Uh, uh, they're going to have an enormous influence on you, but you don't get a choice on that. But you get choices as you go down the line, and you, uh, who you, uh, who you admire, who you, who you, who you want to copy, and the most important for most people in terms of that decision is their spouse. It's also important in terms of a partner in business, but the partner in life is is, is the most important. One. You, you want to pick a spouse that's little bit better than you are <laughs> and then he or she and, hope, and you hope they don't f figure it out too fast. <laughs> I'll leave you with this metaphor Warren uses to encourage everyone to take care of themselves. I was in high school almost a third as long as the country has been around and when I was in high school I really only had two things on my mind girls and cars <laughs> and and I wasn't doing very well with girls, so we'll talk about cars. <laughs> but let's just imagine that when we finish, I'm going to let each one of you pick out the car of your choice. Sounds good, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, pick it out, any color, you name it, it'll be tied up with a bow, and it'll be at your house tomorrow. And you say, well, what's the catch? <laughs> and the catch is, that it's the only car you're going to get in your lifetime. Now, what are you going to do knowing that that's the only car you're ever going to have and you love that car? You're going to take care of it like you cannot believe. Now, what I'd like to suggest, you're not going to get only one car in your lifetime, but you're gonna get one body and one mind, and that's all you're gonna get. And that body and mind feels terrific now, but it has to last you a lifetime. You get exactly one mind and one, and one body in this world, and, and you can't start taking care of it when you're 50. By that time, you'll have rushed it out if you haven't done anything. So you, you, should, you should really make sure that you just remember that you've just got one mind and body to get through life with and to, to do the most with it.